The A-Stroke X570 Extreme 4 is a high-end motherboard that has a decent design with some RGB implementations. I say decent as it actually looks quite good and not like an out-of-season Christmas tree. The X570 Extreme 4 is available for around 235 US dollars or 263 euros on average, depending on where you buy the motherboard and of course if you get a rebate or not. Nevertheless, at this price point, this particular motherboard is cheaper than other X570 equipped motherboards that are included in the so-called high-end segment of the market but we shall see how this particular board performs and what it actually offers in terms of quality and features. The main theme of this motherboard when we talk about the design is a black sapphire PCB with dark blue accents applied directly on the PCB surface. The heat sinks are also integrated into this unique design and are different. Both VRM heatsinks are all black with a matte finish with angular shapes, while the chipset heatsink is gunmetal grey and has a brushed texture. As is the norm with these high-end motherboards, the two M.2 sockets have heatsinks for passively cooling the SSDs, which are also integrated into the chipset heatsink but more on that later on into the review. In terms of accessories, there isn't much to talk about. We have a manual and a quick startup guide, the DVD with all the drivers and software, four all black SATA cables with no right angle connectors unfortunately, three screws for the M.2 SSDs and two standoffs for the same M.2 SSDs. Most likely, on the Wi-Fi version of this motherboard, you would get the Wi-Fi antennas that attach to the back of the motherboard, but our review has the cheaper non-Wi-Fi motherboard, so we get nothing of that. Now we can start with the features of this motherboard, and we start with the VRM, which is composed out of 10 phases in an 8 plus 2 configuration. Basically, you have 8 phases for the CPU and 2 phases for the memory. The phases are made by Vichy and are the SIC634 models and are paired with ISL69147 PWM controllers manufactured by Interseal. When we talk about the capacitors, these are made by Nichicon and are the model called Supreme 12K, which is part of the high-end Black series. These capacitors are rated to work at a temperature of over 105 degrees Celsius for 12,000 hours. In short words, this VRM is good and will handle overclocking with ease. Keep in mind that Vichy components are used in motherboards that are more expensive, such as the X570 Tai Chi, and in many cases, other motherboards that use the same X570 chipset. I would not worry about overclocking or VRM temperature with these components, especially at this price point. In terms of fast storage, the X570 Extreme 4 has two Hyper M.2 sockets, both cooled passively by the chipset heatsink. To remove the heatsink on both sockets, the front plate of the chipset heatsink must be removed. Luckily, this can be done by unscrewing three Phillips screws. Speaking of the front chipset plate, by removing it, you gain access to the active cooling of the motherboard, which comes in the form of a single small fan. This particular fan is made by Champion and is the model number CF4010H12S. Luckily, it seems to maintain a low RPM during normal usage of the system and only when high CPU usage is detected, it will increase its RPM. Going back to the storage options, there are a total of 8 SATA 6 slots. All these connectors are controlled by the AS Media ASM1074 chip. This particular chip is found above the internal USB 3.0 headers on the right edge of the motherboard. And since we got to talk about the internal USB 3.0 headers, the X570 Extreme 4 has two of them, located right at the bottom of the ATX power connector of the motherboard. Unfortunately, neither of these headers are right angled to aid with the cable management, especially since their position makes the routing of the USB 3.0 cable of the case quite tricky, because this cable is often thick and not that flexible. One feature that is pretty obvious is a third M.2 socket located dead center on the motherboard under the top Hyper M.2 socket. This smaller M.2 socket is called an E-key slot and is used for either a dedicated Wi-Fi or Bluetooth network card. In our case, this being the cheaper Extreme 4 motherboard, this slot is empty, but if you buy the more expensive Wi-Fi version of this board, then that slot is going to be populated by an Intel Wi-Fi network card. This lack of a Wi-Fi network card is in fact a blessing in disguise, as it allows you to choose whatever Wi-Fi network card you so desire. The PCI Express slots are plentiful. We have two PCI Express 16 slots and three PCI Express 2.0 times one slots. The only slot that is reinforced with metal is the top PCI Express slot, while the others are plain black plastic. 
The lack of meta reinforcements on these slots is not really a bad thing as it is most likely going to increase the overall price of the motherboard while doing nothing more than enriching the design of the motherboard. The X570 Extreme 4 has no power and reset buttons or a two digit display for temperature and error codes. This motherboard is equipped with a set of four small LEDs that will light up during the booting sequence. Astrox calls these LEDs post status checker. It is unfortunate that at this price point, the onboard power and reset buttons are not included as well as the two digit display. Those are really useful especially when trying to diagnose a problem. This motherboard is also equipped with a new type of internal connector, well more like an internal header, called the front panel type C USB 3.2 gen 1 header. This particular header is used by newer cases that are equipped with the new USB 3.2 ports and it is a great feature to have on a motherboard as more and more cases will have these types of USB ports available. The audio system is pretty standard among the Astrock motherboard lineup. It has as its centerpiece the Realtek ALC1220 and the filtering is done by 5 capacitors made by Nichicon which are part of the Fine Gold series. The final filtering is done by the standard line traced around the entire audio system, which protects the audio components from interferences and thus gives you a better overall audio experience. At the back of the motherboard, we have plenty of connectivity options available. Starting as usual from left to right, we have a single HDMI port, then a combined PS2 port, combined means that it can use either a keyboard or a mouse. Then we have four USB 3.0 ports, a single USB Type-C port and a single USB 3.2 port. Finally, we have the RJ45 LAN port with LEDs for activity and of course Underneath it, we have another two USB 3.0 ports. Then we have the six audio jacks with an optical out port. It is important to mention that this IO panel has an integrated IO panel shield, which is also padded. To remove the shield, you need to remove the entire IO panel cover assembly from the motherboard. The bias is good with a blue abstract background and light blue and white menus and writing. It is easy to read and has no lag when navigating through the pages. There is no easy mode start page available at all. Instead, the bias will boot up in the main information page. There are no flash animations or impressive effects. This BIOS is simple and it works without a hiccup. It can also be updated via the internet connectivity on the Astrox servers. Now we can get into the performance segment of our review. And the Astrox X570 Extreme 4 has been tested as all X570 motherboards using an AMD Ryzen 5 3600X CPU paired with a Founders Edition GTX 1070 graphics card. The first game in our test is GTA 5, still being used as unplayed thanks to its online mode that has been extensively updated and improved. For me, this game is also very good to benchmark as many of the single player missions are scripted and can deliver consistent results. The performance of this motherboard is what we can expect, being about 2 frames per second slower than the Astrock X570 Creator, a motherboard that is not only more expensive but uses a better VRM system and has a better construction overall. Nevertheless, the performance is very good, with an average frame rate of 134 frames per second and a minimum frame rate of 87 frames per second, with no dips or tearing to be found. The second game to be tested is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, running at 1080p with Herox disabled and the Ultra preset selected. There were some minor drops into the frame rate, especially in high dense areas of the game. However, the overall experience is very good. The next game in our review is Metro Exodus, also running at 1080p in DirectX 12 mode and with the Ultra preset selected. While the minimum frame rate is lower, the gaming experience was pretty good, with no dips and random drops to be seen. The final game to be tested is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, running at maximum settings in 1080p DirectX 12 mode and of course pure hair turned off. The X570 Extreme 4 managed an average frame rate of 65 frames per second and a minimum of 52 frames per second. Not bad at all considering the price point of the motherboard and of course of the X570 creator. After taking into consideration all the features offered by this motherboard, we can see that the Astrock X570 Extreme 4 is a good motherboard for its price range. There are plenty of features that are actually useful for both overclocking and daily usage and plenty of design elements to make this motherboard stand out from the crowd. There are two Hyper M.2 SSD sockets available, both with passive cooling by the factory, plus the smaller M.2 E-key socket for either a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth network card. 
The small fan that does the active cooling for the chipset is not noticeable and when it starts to make noise, well, at that point other fans will start increasing their speeds as you are getting into either overclocking or high CPU usage gaming. The performance is very good in both games and benchmarks and the build quality is great with metal components present on most of the motherboard, the only exception to this being the IO panel cover which is a purely cosmetic element.